What is up, sexy, sexy people? It is Dave, it is Duncan, back from Metal Epidemic for another album review. And for this review, Duncan and I have been checking out the new release from UK noisemakers Monolith. The band's new album, Hornet's Nest, will be self-released on March 22nd. Mm. Um, hailing from Devon and Cornwall, Mo- yeah. <laughs> Monolith <laughs> fuse relentless aggression and a cold atmosphere to create a uniquely impassioned form of modern metal tied to a conceptual narrative spanning their discography. Using each album to showcase and explore varying forms of the genre, Hornet's Nest, their latest offering, and the first of three planned releases for 2024. Three! (laughs) Three. um, Is their inquest into black and hardcore. Chronicling the depths of human depravity when man is faced with his own mortality, this album displays monolith at their most raw and visceral, hearkening back to the days of playing floor shows and dive bars with a PA system at breaking point. Um, Once regarded by Metal Hammer as Mashuga in a smack den, their <laughs> their previous releases. No, s- <laughs> we need to step up our description game, Dave. Yeah, that's pretty good for Metal Hammer, actually. Um, yeah. No Saints, No Solace, and Sancta Trinitas, released in March 2020 and 2022, respectively, were reviewed ad- as the grooviest, raw, and most primal displays of intelligently painstaking crafted music that metal has offered to date. Uh, the band's third album was produced, mixed, and mastered by Night Marcher Audio. Satan is who produced Satan, the mix this yes. one here. Um, so, um, yeah, n- not going to lie, the Meshuga quote was probably a lot to do with this album getting added right, to so our... Right, so not on your radar? No, not at all. Um, right, right, because I, I thought, like, should I know... Like, I, I desperately... Like, I didn't listen to any previous stuff, but I did when I was about, what, fucking... What four minutes into it, which is like five tracks, um, <laughs> I was like, like I felt like it sounded so fucking like so intense and so polished. I was like yeah. that, right? These guys clear. This is not album one, right? Yeah. And I went through and I could not recognise any album artwork, and I was like that. We've definitely never reviewed anything from <laughs> no. Monolith, but this could be a Dave's heard a few things, knows a guy that knows a guy that gave him a, a uh, No, so the, the band actually sent sent us an email um, and um, asked if we'd be up for, for reviewing the album. Um, and when I saw the that, that quote, I was like, Yes. You son of a bitch. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, also, only 22 and a half minutes long. <laughs> I mean, I've said it before, I'll say it again, that is a call that I'll take, Dave. Yes, that is a, that is a selling point. Oh, uh, yes. I am on board with. Um, especially when you're trying to wander all 22 point whatever minutes of this with mindless ballads <laughs> yeah, not absolutely. a distortion pedal in sight Dave <laughs> not a breakdown to be heard no yeah, breakdowns um, however like this, this didn't go quite <laughs> however shut the fuck up Duncan this, it, didn't, it didn't go quite as I expected um, with like that quote in mind um, I instantly jumped on Spotify and I was like, right, uh, what we got? Sancta Trinitas, let's fucking fire up that album. And it's like, yes, pounding fucking polyrhythms, the grooves of Meshuga. Um, and, you know, they are a key component of, of that album. Um, and as a oh, man... Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. It is ripping at it. Like, it is right, like, we, 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 I'm looking forward to this conversation here because... Like the polyrhythms are gone. Like yes, so, they are. Yes, they like, are talking. completely gone. Like yeah. as in, like someone has done like a find replace polygons with four four. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. I'm not against that. So um, as a as a, a man who is one of the biggest Meshuga fans on the planet, um, a man who counts in polyrhythms. <laughs> yes. You see him count change in his wallet. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I I really enjoyed it. I listened to the album. I was like, yes, I am down with this. I'm looking forward to checking out that new release. They, they've even got the kind of uh, on that album. They had the like the eerie kind of Meshuga lead work. It was like oh, everyone right. was like, like, this is fucking great. Um, is this the same band? <laughs> it's 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 it's, it's a, probably a little bit more varied than Meshuga. It's not like a, a rip off or like a, a copy yeah. of them. But Monolith are a bit more kind of modern. 
Um, and there's a, there's almost like a, like a little hint of the kind of death core on, on those previous albums as well. Just a, a tiny wee touch. However, imagine my surprise, Duncan, when <laughs> I hit play on Hornet's Nest and the girthy riff sex of my sugar is pretty much non-existent on this album. Yeah, I'm thinking, I've said it before. I will say it again, Dave. The, this this album is the very definition of an upfront cunt. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, it is. Yes. Like, from the first riff, this is like, this is the sound. Yep. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> that, that is correct. That is correct. I was kind of like thinking, what's fucking going on here? Turns out Monolith have changed things up on album number three. Switching it. Flipping it and reverse now. The old switcheroo, Duncan. They've they've opted for something more of the blackened hardcore variety on this one. Um, which, as I said, I'm not going to lie, caught me off guard at first when I first hit play. Yep. Um, but, Duncan, if there's one genre that puts lead in my pencil... Oh, I mean... It's fucking hardcore, my man. I yep. mean, like... Dave puts the hard in core. <laughs> yes, he does. Um, this is... This is relentless. This is like, I imagine like if if you if you loaded these files up on like a on like a an audio or like an, an editing system, um, and you looked at the wave files for this, it would just yeah. be nine straight <laughs> solid blocks of sound, just like long rectangles across your stream, nine of them. It looked look like a kid's Lego set. <laughs> um, like, yeah um no real gaps or or like prolonged quiet sections this just it goes from zero to ten in the space yeah. of a few seconds and remains there for about 23 minutes 10 all the way right through yeah yeah um but within those 23 23 minutes of of chaos um monolith do also give you variances of this new sound um from the super visceral like blast attack on catalyst or the caves um to a more kind of like mid-paced kind of hardcore stomp on inquest um or the more kind of crust infused elements on infinite abyss um they they definitely like to keep it switching um which yeah. which i really enjoyed on hornet's nest um they also kind of pepper this album with a few sections that lean um, a little bit further into the almost kind of death metal side of things, um, which, to be honest, makes total sense because they are like kind of teetering on that edge of that extreme sound for most of the album. So when they mix in something akin to something kind of of the old school death metal uh, during like Bone Farmer, for example. Bone Farmer, by the way, is yeah. is <laughs> my fucking jam. Play it, <laughs> play it at my funeral. <laughs> Um, At the thirty-second mark, when literally the sounds of recorded hell are played, but I yeah. shat myself. Like I, <laughs> like I swear to God, I listened to it. It was, it was rapidly building, and I was like, "Oh, I know where this is going," because yeah. you know they, they did it in all the other songs. And uh, I, I'm sure this is about the thirty-second mark. There's just the sounds of like, like just tortured, like fucking souls condemned <laughs> to eternity. Just goes like this yeah. out there. I like I visibly like was like fucking <laughs> like like is that shit running down my leg? Yes, yes it is. Change your pants, please. <laughs> um, but it's, it's a very natural transition. Um, and they, you, there's moments where they get even more direct with it, which I really enjoyed. It almost comes across like a a bit kind of Swedish death metal um, mm. on the, the offering. I think it's a, a really good example of that, where they just let that side of it take the wheel and they give you a really hefty groove, but there's a bit of kind of like nostalgia in there as well. Um, they also weave in something a bit more, a bit moodier, a bit darker on the closing track. Um, Smart placed as well, longest yeah. track. Close out with something with a... Well, the, I'm saying that. I, like, I've got about two minutes <laughs> in it, and I was track. like that. They've slowed this right... I'm appreciating the slow down of like... I was like, don't you... T -t 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 <laughs> just for a wee bit. Just yeah. for a wee bit. Yeah. But they couldn't help themselves, Dave. They had to no, get they a wee couldn't. bit there. Um, a vermin's end, they, uh, they bring the speed, speed down um, to some, something that feels a little bit more in the kind of... almost in the kind of doomier realms. Um, yeah. And the chord choices and kind of the lead work really ramps up the like kind of malevolent kind of tones on the track. Um, and they make sure it goes out with a bang by increasing yeah. the tempo and the intensity 
before just kind of leading out with this huge kind of filthy groove. Um, to be honest, a lot of this made me think of more on that kind of like Danish and partly American scene than the UK. Like I, I wasn't can't... picturing Cornwall yeah. when I was listening to this. Like, 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 I've seen like there's like, fucking pictures of Cornwall that go out on fucking tins of biscuits around the world. <laughs> It's a relatively picturesque part of the world, and then I'm looking at the album artwork, yeah, and the sound, and I'm like, I, I just <laughs> don't, it, it doesn't mesh. It, it does. Yeah. Like to me, I was expecting you to say the word Danish, um, yeah. just because of the predominance of 100%. very bleak, very yeah. fucking miserable Danish music that we've listened to that we love. For so. sure. Um, we've we've recently reviewed like the new Life Sick uh, EP yes. and and like those guys would probably slot into um, that realm of of style you know bands wise it, it definitely felt more kind of Danish to me at times um, maybe not like quite as distinctive as a band like yeah. of uh, like Life Sick uh, yet but um, I think uh, that there's a there's a touch um, there's a, maybe a couple of tracks here that are a little bit. I want to say a little bit forgettable, but um, I like I like the fact they've moved into something completely different to what they've done previously, yeah. um, and the fact they have another two releases coming out this year, which um, makes sense. At twenty, if this is twenty-two and a bit minutes long, yeah, yeah. Then, and they're, 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 how long was their previous release? Was it? Are we talking over the twenty-five minute mark? I'm pretty or? sure it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah. Um, so they probably um, got a lot more in the tank by, yeah, kind of focusing it down. Yeah. Um, interested to see if the other two releases are going to be similar style to this, or if they're going to go <laughs> elsewhere. Um, I think so, so many kicks to the testicles I can take, Dave. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Um, I think on the production side of things, um, it's got a lot of a lot of weight to it. There's a real kind of coarseness to the album uh, that really suits the the style they've went for. I love the the kind of HM2 kind of type guitar tone they've got. It really elevates those like deathy parts on the album. Um, I think the the vocal delivery adds a lot of like visceral energy to the album. Um, his style and tone is very much like upfront and personal. Um, I, there, there was one element of it that I didn't love in the there's a slightly kind of overdriven effect that they use on the vocals. Um, and I felt like they maybe used that a little too much on the album. Um, I think it'd be cool in places, but I felt like as it went on, it felt a little bit repetitive. Um, that aside, I think the these guys um, have huge potential to do something like top, top tier, to be honest. I think that the playing is tight. Um, they are very accomplished at what they do instrumentally. Um, and the fact they're able to switch over to a style that they haven't really delved into before now and deliver it like this is pretty impressive, to be honest. So I'm much looking forward to, to what else they've got planned for 2024. Um, how about yourself? What did, you, what did you make of the rest of this? Yeah, this is absolutely fucking savage. Um, yeah. I'm, like, I'm surprised with that, like the kind of polar rhythms and all the rest. See, untangling that from a band sound is like almost impossible. If you yeah. think and write in polyrhythms, kind of going yeah. Yeah. this direction, is like your brain's not wired that way. It's mm. like, you know what I mean? Like, when you write in polyrhythms, that's how your brain works. So to go the other way down a more conventional route, and that's taking nothing away from it, this is, it is, I think it's all 4 4 all the way right through. Mm. Um, but it's the, the the level of playing here. The yeah. intensity is, is consistent. The speed, the delivery, the production is. It's just, it's huge sounding. Mm. Like, see if you told me, yes, there's 18 guys in this band. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, you sure you mean 20? Uh, like, it, it has that weight about it. Mm. Um, I, I just, we, we talk about this before when it comes to shorter releases where there's lots of songs, there is a danger of tracks bleeding into one another and mm. thus losing their... Uh, independence um, and the overall construction of the album. This album doesn't suffer from that. I actually think they have very definite deliveries of start and stop on all the tracks. Now, when I say stop, I don't mean as in like there's a two second break and then the next thing kicks off. Mm. As in like whatever picks up, like even a great example, Bone Farmer into the Caves. Uh, there's two distinctly different styles of playing on that one, mm. even though they fit under the monolith sound. I think what they actually showed me with, with 
kind of great horror and glee in probably <laughs> equal measure is the fact that they have they have this like horrifically heavy death metal side this kind of blast side about them and just like a like an emphasis on this kind of oh well, at times almost like hardcore groove mm-hmm. but played at velocity but this blackened element which almost permeates everything through it which sits so comfortably not the most original thing we've heard there's a lot of bands in this sphere we mentioned a few other parts of the world where they're utilizing it Mm. it's not something i think about when i think about the uk though so from that point of view i think actually if anything makes them stand out quite a bit um at 22 and a half minutes long (laughs) how can you grumble um Mm -hmm. they could literally play this live yep assuming they're on a support slot for any band to complete this entirety and then say buy it um, and yeah. I probably would uh, if I'm being <laughs> honest they're also on top of that I know you were saying there's a there is a is a kind of almost it feels like a not quite radio effect in the vocal for some of those savage mm. moments mm. I quite like it I know where you're coming from and I know your issue with it and you're not wrong but I don't necessarily view the vocals in the same way you are on this release I'm actually viewing them the same way I would have you kind of view a guitar effect Mm. so for me when it comes in what the rest of the instruments are doing it actually works for me I'm not going to argue on this length of album it leans in on it and you can hear these vocals without the effect and they're just as savage so Mm. I don't necessarily think they add much out with a production technique live he's not going to be doing that someone's not going to be pressing a button he's going to be powering right through it Uh, Bone Farmer for me is Holy fucking shit. Um, <laughs> if there's two standouts for me, Bone Farmer's one of them and A Vermin's End is the other. Mm, yeah. For completely different reasons. Bone Farmer comes almost at the halfway mark. And it's the first kind of longer form track. It forms two long form tracks into the caves, which is the second longer form track of the album. But Bone Farmer just shows a ton of creative creativity and ingenuity in the playing a lot of stops and starts, tempo changes, um, kind of stylistic and writing choices which make it really, really interesting. And mm. just like a consistent level of it's just going to get heavier and more disgusting as we go along. Uh, a Berman's End is the perfect close to this because it's the one that paints a huge amount of atmosphere and tone which the album really hasn't given you. Mm. That the album's given you like intensity and a Berman's End is almost a way to decompress that but in a way where you feel uneasy. So when it builds back into something with peace and then builds back down into that kind of, that realm of atmosphere and uh, uncomfort, um, it it works so, so well on that. It's a smart move putting it at the end. Hmm. I would very much like yourself, I'd be curious now that I know they're doing another two things, whether or not they're designed to link in. So if that leads into thematically something Mm. on the next release which contains more atmosphere, that would be cool as fuck. Yeah. And I think if they if they they haven't written it yet and have just heard that <laughs> as an idea, please feel free to steal the fuck out of that. Because um, like to me, I like I feel like even from the album artwork, the idea, the hornets, this, the use of samples, which you, you didn't mention, but the samples in here are telling a story mm. about the end of the world here, about like essentially we end this album on the the idea that comets, more than one, are about to hurtle Earth signaling probably what the album artwork shows which is yeah. almost a red planet of desolation so um if you know I, I love those ideas and the, the the samples are used spaced throughout as well almost like they are thematically leaning the story through so i love that yeah like overall i think as a uk band i think they're doing enough here to make them stand out vastly different from a lot of what the uk scene's doing at the moment mm-hmm. i had pictured more of a Scandinavia uh, behind it just because we've heard a lot of stuff from there. But that's not to say these sound like those bands. They're putting their own spin on it. The black and mm. the elements are what really raise it for me. Um, I think it's what gives it like something a little bit different from the from the norm. Um, and yeah, the, like, it's hard to it's hard not to to admire bands that just give you everything in their release. Mm. We have a small window of time here, so we put it all on the on the line. The fact that they've got a a back catalogue of stuff which is 
maybe technically more superior from a compositional point of view. Mm. Um, you don't, they're not shortchanging you here. The riffs are savage, your solos, techniques, delivery, pace, the drumming is ridiculous. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's fucking full on, powerful, great release. Mm. And one at a length that you can very easily, if you're having a bad day, Hornet's Nest is your go to album. Mm. See if you want to tell your boss to fuck off, <laughs> listen to this album and it will feel like you have. <laughs> nice um so uh last thing scores for hornet's nest um yeah this is a really good um delivery of an album from a band that i knew nothing about um but are now firmly on my radar after this release um really exciting to hear that they've switched kind of styles for this album um and you know thinking about it more now the, the album title of hornet's nest completely fits the sound yeah. on this album um, even vocally, even though I had that little issue with the, the kind of vocal effect, I felt maybe got overused a little bit. It kind of fits with the whole Hornet's Nest sound as well. It's something almost insectoid about it. So. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to hearing what's next. Um, I think this is really good, um, especially at that length as well. It's very easy just to fire on, you know, two or three times. Um, I'm going to go four out of five on this one. Um, really good release. Looking forward to hearing what they're going to do next. Uh, what about yourself? Big Davey, we have an accord. I'm also coming in at a four here. Um, I think it's great. I think it's like, there's what's there not to like? And I can't imagine we will not be seeing these guys, hopefully in some dive bar somewhere. Um, <laughs> Hell yeah. And I look forward to I look forward to having the blood pour from my eardrums. <laughs> so, yeah, four out of five. Nice. Uh, Monolith, Hornets, Hornets Nest, out on March 22nd. Links below the band, to the band camp, all that sort of stuff. Check it out. Have a listen. See what you think. Let us know. That's the review. Thanks for checking it out. We'll be back with another review very soon. But until then, take care. Speak to you soon. Bye, everyone.